So how are we going to create them? Now, you, I have worked with corporates on building out their own team values and you do that as a group. And if there are corporates out there that are interested in that, then you can head over to my website where we can and find the corporate section down at the bottom where work on bringing out your values together as a team. However, and there's a small little plug that I didn't think I was going to have to going to be bringing into this episode, but from an individual basis, the difference is that you are just bringing your own individuals into, into life. It doesn't mean that you can't work within a team that has its own values. So a team's value set will be how you want to work as a collective. And then within that, you can have your own values of how you might fit in your own values and behaviors within that structure within that whole organization and if you play sport or again even in business you are going to be moving potentially whether it's from department to department team to team uh, place to place and everyone's going to have different values that they hold as a squad as a as a team and and in an environment but you can keep yours as a stronghold to identify who you are what you bring to that organization that community and also how you really value yourself. Like it, there's nothing more rewarding than knowing you are living by your values. You're making decisions based on your values. You are interacting with people in the most authentic and organic way that you can. So let's go into how we actually create them. And I want you to either grab a piece of paper. In the MindStrong journal, there is a, a section where you can actually do this whole process. But if all you need to do is whether it's grab your phone into the notes, or grab a pen and paper that cathartic process of writing down and putting pen to paper is a brilliant way to do this and all you're going to do for the first exercise is to describe one of your toughest moments in your life and then write down what energy did you draw upon to get through it so what was a really challenging moment that you had and then what were the energies that you drew upon in order to get through that and you will start to write down some descriptive words that are really going to be about your level of resilience that you had. And they'll be, they could be people that you leaned on. They could be activities that you did. They could be behaviors that you had shown and that you felt allowed you to get through those tough moments. In a previous episode of Reframing Negative Experiences, we spoke about what were the the experiences that you'd gone through that were negatively affecting your life and would you go through them again and the whole Mo Gordat conversation around the eraser test was that most people really would so even if going back to that tough moment that really challenging moment is a a tough or really challenging process for you I just encourage you to think of what were the positives and what were the like I said these energies that you drew upon to get out of it to get through it to to weather that storm what were some of those energies and those behaviors that you and start to write them down it could be phrases it could be one word if you do write a sentence or a phrase and you start to script it out start to underline some of the the main descriptive words that you see in there you'll start to understand that that was it might be hard work it might be um, doggedness it could be perseverance it could be uh, calmness it might be kindness that you've you showed in that moment so just find those words and maybe underline them or if you're listing them as bullet points then great as well then we move on to the next exercise which is identify a proud moment in your life where you were at your best and you were at your most authentic self so a moment where you were truly proud of what you had done and write down what you were like in that moment so what were some of the if someone was viewing you from outside in, in on like a third uh, like a bird's eye view or a third person view what were some of the the behaviors that you were showing what were some of the things how did you look how did you sound and identify what that person looked like because that was when you were really at your best you were proud of who you were you were proud of what you were doing and that again is a authentic organic best version of who you are same process write down some of those phrases write down some of those words and start to gather a little bit more understanding of what they they are and what they look like you might find some similarities you might find some differences but whatever it is just get them down onto paper it's really about just throwing as much at the wall as you can here for the moment next exercise is describing how you would like someone else to describe you so the way i would it would say about this exercise is imagine you have you've got an invisible cloak on and you're hearing someone talk to someone else about you and they're only 
they're only pumping up your tires they are really backing you and they are describing you and the best things about you to someone else write down what you would like that person to be saying about you it's the things that you want to be seen doing in the world it's the way in which you want to be presenting yourself to the world and once you've written that down once you've described those things try to go in as much detail as you can so if you write something like kindness or uh, lewis is kind what does kindness look like what does that kindness how does it exhibit itself kindness can look in many different ways is it listening to others is it taking being patient with others is it so really get into the description of what that word means so that you can start to really conjure up some idea of what the values you want to bring into the world because the values that we get onto they don't necessarily have to be one word answers they can actually be sort of action based phrases that will again trigger you into recognizing what the behaviors are going to sit underneath it so again write down what you would like someone to describe you as how you want them to describe you get as much down as you can be as descriptive as you possibly can go into much depth as you can so that you get a real good idea of of what it looks like and after that exercise you can actually ask yourself well am i living this am i living by this version of myself am i doing this and you can kind of hold yourself accountable to an extent where you can you can really look at it and go well this is what i want people to see me as am i doing that and you might be able to again go to my favorite question sets of questions is can i control this if yes take action if no i need to accept it so look at those that description and see where there's some there's some areas that you already are doing and you're maintain you're able to maintain and also have a look at see where you can possibly start to develop and move the needle in, in a better direction and then finally the last exercise for discovering is if you're really stuck with something like this and you're struggling to bring it out yourself ask a friend a family member someone you really trust and you're open and honest with quite a lot that you can ask them what is it that you value in me what are the what do I do to show this? Why am I a good friend? And, and and they may come out with, again, really cliched answers, but then go a little bit deeper and go, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But what makes me unique as a friend? Why do we? Why are we friends? What is it that I bring to you that you keep texting me or we keep hanging out? We've been friends for so long. Why has that happened? What is it that I'm doing that allows this friendship to, to ha- be here for so long? And you will start to get some answers. You will start to get some of those behaviors, some of those values, and they should start to list them and they can go a little bit deeper. You can question them, you can ask them, is there anything else? Is there is there more? Is there anything a way in which I make you feel? And you can start to bring that out. So whether that is a friend, a colleague, a teammate, a family member, just ask anyone that you trust, anyone that you really feel will give you an, an honest answer and you can have that in-depth conversation. Again, if you kind of know them, but don't, you more than likely just get a cliched answer and that's not what we're aiming for we want depth we want meaning we want some real quality coming from these conversations